Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at naive base classifier and different variants of it, which are Gauss gain, categorical, Bernoulli, and multinomial naive base. So, uh, what is a naive base classifier? What is it and why is it called so? Naive base classifier is a classification algorithm in machine learning that given uh, the test instance, we have to classify the test instance into one of the classes or categories and uh, it's a supervised learning algorithm. It's based on probabilities, so it's a probabilistic classifier and it applies Bayes theorem with a strong independence assumption. So uh, let's understand the last sentence in more details by the name naive base. So the naive base assumes that all the predictors or features in our data are independent of each other, which rarely happens in real life, right? So but it makes an assumption, so it's called a uh, naive base classifier, and also it uses Bayes theorem. That's why it's called naive base classifier. Naive assumption as well as using Bayes theorem, so it's called naive base classifier. And next we will look at what is Bayes theorem. Bayes theorem helps us to describe probability of an event with more confidence based on the prior knowledge of conditions that might be related to the event. For example, the test result of a rare disease for a person has come positive then if we have the prior knowledge that how rare the disease is and how accurate the test is we can use Bayes theorem the formula of Bayes theorem to find the actual chances with more confidence that the person has actually the rare disease or not and this is the formula of uh, Bayes uh, theorem where p a given b is given by p b given a into p a divided by p b where a and b are different events a given B is the conditional probability that is the likelihood of event A happening given that the B has happened and similarly P, B given A is also conditional probability the likelihood of event B given A has happened and P and P B are the probabilities of event A and B which are also known as the marginal probability. Now how is uh, this base theorem and uh, the naive assumption are together used in the form of a classifier which is the naive base classifier how they are actually used let's look at that so we have seen naive base classifier is a conditional probability model that uses base theorem so what happens if we have a vector x vector x can be uh, thought of as a training or test instance so we have an instance we have to classify it into one of the classes then we will use the uh, uh, this formula which is very similar to the or which is actually the base theorem formula and only but articulated in the in a form where it can help us to predict the probability of the classes. So given uh, the test instance, instance, we have to classify it into one of the classes. So what is the probability that it belongs to one of the k classes? Uh, so probability that the instance belongs to class k, uh, c uh, k is given by, given by the probability of class c k multiplied by probability of uh, x given c k divided by probability of x. So, so, so uh, what are these terminologies called in the uh, uh, domain of naive base classifier? Let's look into that. So, this probability is known as the posterior probability and this probability PC is known as the prior probability and this is called the likelihood and the probability PX is called the uh, evidence. So, uh, how is it applied? So, when we have to classify an instance in instance into one of the classes we first find the prior probability that how frequently that class occurs in the data set so if you have like let's say uh, 10 data points in two of them class a occurs in four of them class b occurs and so you can simply calculate that two out of ten four out of ten in that way you can calculate the prior probability now given the class how likely the feature is that uh, becomes easier to calculate calculate because of the naive assumptions that all features are independent. So these things becomes independent. So given class uh, CK, what is the probability of X1? Given class CK, what is the probability of X2? And so on. Because of the naive assumption, we are able to break it or uh, write it into independent terms. And we can drop the term PX because it's common across the calculation of all the classes. So the uh, instance will, will get classified to the class with highest posterior probability which is nothing but prior into likelihood now uh, enough being, being said now let's look at how it is actually used so let's say we uh, a person has 170 pounds weight 59 feet height uh, and country of origin is us we have to find whether the person is male or female so what we will do is 
first of all we will have to see in the data set what is the prior probability of male and female that how frequently male occurs and how frequently female occurs and then we can use the likelihood to reverse calculate uh, the uh, probabilities that given a male how likely this height 59 is given a male how likely weight 170 is given a male how likely country is US and similar thing we can do for female and we can find which is uh, bigger and the instance the person will get classified to that uh, sex male or female so we looked at naive based classifier this is the formula for naive based classifier prior into likelihood and the class with uh, highest posterior uh, gets uh, the instance which we are trying to classify but depending on the feature type the likelihood calculation may differ so what is the pro like how likely this feature is given class ck right if the feature is continuous data like weight height of the person uh, the type of night base variant we use is gaussian night base so basically we fit a distribution uh, gaussian distribution to the feature and we determine the parameters of that gaussian distribution by maximum likelihood estimation and like as i told weight height of the person these are example of continuous data and when uh, the feature is categorical for example country of origin and all we see how likely different values within that feature occurs and we can find the probabilities so there the version we use or the variant we use is categorical like this for text and nlp data we transform the text and nlp data into words uh, and uh, we see whether the presence of word is there in that uh, instance or not so presence of word and frequency of the word is used to calculate the probability and uh, example could be given a document we have to classify whether it's a spam or non-spam mail and the variant uh, for this of night base is Bernoulli and multinomial night base so the first variant of night base is Gaussian night base we will briefly look at all the variants so uh, let's say given height weight and foot size all of these are continuous data we have to classify whether the person is male or female so uh, what first we will do is we will fit a Gaussian distribution to each of the feature we will get a mean and variance and then we'll then calculate the prior probability so out of eight samples four are male and four are female so four out of eight four out of eight so male probability is 0.5 and female probability is 0.5 now given a test instance where the height of the person is six feet weight is 130 pounds and the foot size is eight inches we have to classify whether the person is male or female what we can do is we can use the likelihood formula that given male how probable the height six is and we can use the PDF of the Gaussian distribution which is probability density function as a proxy for the probability. We can do it for height, weight and foot size using the mean and variance that we have calculated for each class. And it comes out if we do all the calculation the posterior of female is greater than the posterior of male so the test instance get classified as female. Next we will look at categorical knife base. So if we see uh, that the features are video games, storybook, cooks and, and painting. So whether a person we have to uh, classify is a male or female given these features, the, the type of game they play, the type of storybooks, whether they read storybooks or not, whether they cook or not and whether they paint or not. And uh, the test instances, the person plays FIFA, person doesn't read storybook, person cooks, person paints, we have to classify whether it's a male or female. Similarly, we will first calculate the prior out of 8, 4 are male and 4 are female. So prior probability becomes 50, 50, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now calculate the likelihood is calculating likelihood is simple. Given male, what is the probability that person pay, plays FIFA? So out of the four instances, three plays FIFA, so three by four. Similarly, we can calculate for all other features. And given this test instance, we can uh, write the problem in this way that we have to find the posterior that given person plays FIFA doesn't read storybook and cooks and paints what is the probability that he is a male and similarly this feature there is the probability that this person is female we can use the prior probability and all the likelihoods that we have calculated and if we plug in the values we will find that the test instance gets, gets a probability of 0.75 for being a male and 0.25 for being a female so the person gets classified as male this is how categorical knife base works. Now what are the problems one can run through uh, with knife base? So let's say uh, this was our training data set and uh, now a person comes who plays Candy Crush, uh, doesn't read a storybook, doesn't cook and paints. Now if we have to classify 
uh, or find the posterior probability, it will come out that the probability for male is zero. The reason is not because the person doesn't resemble male, but the reason is that uh, the in the training data, uh, the value candy class has never occurred for male class. So this is this problem is called zero frequency problem. Knife base faces the zero frequency problem where it uh, assigns probability zero because some value of that categorical feature uh, has never occurred for a particular class. And uh, the solution is adaptive smoothing, where for all the distinct values of a feature, we add it lambda number of times for each of the classes initially before running the uh, or calculating the probabilities. And this lambda could be anything. The Generally, people use a value of 1 and uh, this is called uh, Laplace uh, smoothing or adaptive smoothing. So uh, this technique helps uh, and uh, uh, solves the problem of zero frequency problem whether where it doesn't happen that all other features are resembling to a particular class but because one of the values or one of the feature that is very new which has never occurred for uh, that particular class uh, occurs and the whole probability becomes zero. So this problem doesn't happen, we can do adaptive smoothing. Next, we'll look at uh, the last variant of uh, last variants of knife based classifier, which is Bernoulli and multinomial distribution. These are used in tax data or natural language processing. So one may ask that uh, the knife based classifier is very naive and it uses Bayes theorem. How? Why should we use it for tax data when we already know that embeddings, LSTM, and all neural networks with one classification layer does can perform better than a knife based classifier? Uh, so I would say that it's uh, good to know how a knife based classifier works because it generalizes well, well for even a small amount of data and even if we are using some sophisticated neural network for classification of text data, we can use this multinomial or Bernoulli, uh, uh, district, uh, Bernoulli variants of knife based classifier as a baseline to start with. And first we will look at the Bernoulli knife based classifier. So this is our training data where we have some text content and we have to classify whether it's a spam or non-spam. First we will learn from the training data so that we can generalize for some new test instance, the offer for limited period. This is a test instance we have, which we have to classify to one of the class which is spam or non-spam. So how uh, the Bernoulli knife based classifier or the variant of knife base for text data works is we first break down the text into features and we each word becomes a features uh, that is provide steps and it's a bag of word approach so that the sequence of the word we are uh, not using we are saying that all words randomly occur so so it's not uh, it's not able to capture the context and uh, next what we do is also people remove stop word and do some kind of stemming and all but the main idea is that uh, uh, we use this function or this formula of base theorem where we calculate the prior probabilities and we calculate the likelihood. Uh, the likelihood, uh, we use a Bernoulli distribution that is even if the word occurs multiple times for a test training instance, we just uh, see whether it has occurred or not. That is success or failure. That is what the Bernoulli distribution is, right? So uh, we uh, just take all the words and just see in that instance whether that word has occurred or not. So if you see promotion, promotion has occurred twice, but still we just give value one that is success or failure. The word is occurred or not. And then we can calculate the uh, prior and likelihood. So for prior out of four instance, two are spam. So two out of four for non-spam out of four, two are non-spam. So two out of four. So equal probability of spam and non-spam. Now for calculating the likelihood, uh, how likely the word promotion is given class spam. So out of the two instances of spam class, says uh, promotion has occurred only in one of the instance so one by two and similarly we can calculate for all other uh, words and given this test instance similarly we can find the likelihood of the given class spam offer given spam and so on and similarly for non-spam and see the posterior uh, probability that is prior into likelihood for which class it's greater and the test instance will get classified to that uh, class. For multinomial knife base, everything is similar. We break down the text into features, which are words. But here, the likelihood, we use uh, multinomial distribution. That is, the probability of word given a particular class will be equal to number of times the word has occurred divided by all the words within that class. So we can also capture the frequency, that number of times the word has occurred. 
So calculating the prior same out of four class two times is spam out of four class two times is non spam and the probability of promotion given is spam becomes two out of fifteen. That out of all the fifteen words that occurs that occurs across spam class two times the word promotion occurs and uh, probability of task given non spam out of twenty three words that occurs across non spam class. The ta word task appears twice, so two out of twenty-three. In similarly, we can calculate the uh, likelihood for all other words, and given a test instance, we can uh, multiply prior and likelihood to find the posterior, and uh, the instance will get classified to the class with higher posterior probability. Uh, some necessary adjustment that we have to do in uh, Bernoulli and multinomial like uh, base variance as well. Uh, so it also faces a zero frequency problem that one word has never never occurred in the training data for one of the classes. So if that word occurs in the test instance, then the probability will become zero for the class where it has never occurred, even though all the other words have occurred in the uh, that class. So what we do is all the unique words we add lambda number of times to all the classes before running the classifier. So this solves the problem and this is called adaptive smoothing or left smoothing similar to one we have seen in the categorical line base. And other thing is that when we break the text into features that is each word the text can be very long so multiplication of all the likelihoods all the probability of the words can become a very small value and there can be numerical uh, instability. So to bring the numerical stability what we can do is we can take uh, the cal do the calculation in uh, log Logarithm scale. So we know that log is a monotonously increasing function. So we can just apply a log to it. So all the multiplication terms will become an additive. So it solves the problem of numerical instability and provides stability. So these are the two things: zero frequency problem and underflow problem. We can uh, tackle by adaptive smoothing and using the log uh, for calculation. So uh, that's it for this video where we looked at uh, naive base classifier. What is the naive assumption and uh, what is the base theorem and we looked at different variants of naive base classifiers which are gaussian categorical bernoulli and multinomial naive base we look all we also looked at uh, examples to understand each variant in a better way so hope you like the video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more content bye